Okay, D Dr. Riley, we stopped at the point of, uh, I think we lost that part. It's when, when, when do you exactly know uh, or identify when the Meroitic died out? You mentioned that the, the, the death or the demise of the Meroitic as a language, as a spoken language, happened exactly at the same time when the first, or approximately when the first Nubian language was written because they took two no, signs. No, 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 uh, what I said is that we, we got uh, here proved that it was still living mm -hmm. when this alphabet was invented. So it was living, it did not start to yeah, die. Yeah, it was it died later. Yes. But we have what we call mm -hmm. a terminus mm -hmm. postquam. Okay. Uh, it, uh, uh, a date mm -hmm. which uh, is before the, the, the death of Meretic. Yeah. Okay. And after, but as I told, but I don't know if it was recorded. It was not recorded. Yeah, it was I, recorded I, I just say that probably the the strongest levy, mm -hmm. levy, yeah? yes, the levy. The strongest levy for changing minds, customs, languages mm -hmm. is not economics or anything. It's religion, mm -hmm. not politics even. It's religion. Religion it has a ter incredible power yeah. uh, on the minds, and so we can see very often in the words that languages disappeared because they were the vehicle of uh, outdated religion. Mm -hmm. It appeared in France, for example, when Gaulish was completely uh, uh, replaced by Latin because mm -hmm. Latin became the vehicle of Christianity, mm -hmm. as Gaulish was still for the paganism. Mm -hmm. And the same probably happened in Sudan. Mm -hmm. Nubian, thanks to the monks who converted the kings of Nabadia first, mm -hmm. and after of uh, Alodia, mm -hmm. and finally probably of Makodia. Mm -hmm. Uh, then they, at this time Nubian became the, the official vehicle of mm -hmm. Christianity mm -hmm. and we can imagine but we have no proof whatsoever uh, that is a bit speculative but it's of course taken from examples somewhere else in the world correct, correct. Uh, <coughs> we can imagine that the Merites were many of the Merites and were still practi practicing their religion mm -hmm. we don't know about the religion of Nubians before Christianity, you know, mm. we really we have few few clues, I would say. Uh, but in in this case, uh, Meroitic uh, was considered as a pagan language Correct. and disappeared. Mm. A bit like uh, Islam also mm. imposed Arabic mm -hmm. in parts of uh, Sudan, for example, uh, uh, in uh, the region of Shandi, etc. Uh, we know that they spoke a kind of Nubian, which I call Soba Nubian, which my, uh, my colleagues are, are call. The Soba Nubian around Chendi or in Soba? Oh, from uh, the fifth cataract the until Khartoum. Okay. Mm. Uh, and probably also Soba and mm. probably further, you know. Yes. Um, and then I don't know what I was. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> I got yeah, you lost. Yeah, yeah, we know that uh, it, still it was spoken uh, probably four to f four to three centuries ago, you know, mm. and completely disappeared, you know, mm. and it was not only replaced uh, by uh, Arabic, but even in the mind of people, if you speak with Jalain, mm. Jalain, Jalain, yes, yeah, they would tell you that uh, they are the descent of Abbas. Mm -hmm. And so they are pure Arabs, etc., which is of course uh, mythical. It's a big lie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, we have everywhere in the world uh, people never want to be what they are. <laughs> I know, I know, that's true. So you, you strongly believe that Jaalin and everybody, the entire country or the entire nation right now, they used to speak different dialect of Nubian. After as far lost. as we can document, yes, uh, Nubian was spoken then in the Nile Valley, of mm -hmm. course, uh, only uh, from the second cataract. Mm -hmm. And after uh, a party of Dongola, we, of Danagla, mm -hmm. uh, went to, to Aswan around Kansan Daula. Mm -hmm. uh, so there was a migration of uh, Dungola, Dan Danagla uh, yes. over there. That yes. would explain why, why uh, Matoki, uh, that is uh, uh, Kunuzi, mm -hmm. Nubian, uh, is close, so close to Dongolawi mm -hmm. and so f different from Nabin, you know. Uh, and so otherwise you got uh, Nubian people in the Nuba Mountains, the mm -hmm. north of the Nuba Mountains, that is around Dilling. Mm -hmm. So we got many different dialects, Dilling, Habila, uh, uh, Kadero, etc. Mm -hmm. et yes. um, around 10 of them. 
more than that probably, uh, but we know that they have been coming recently in mm. fact uh, because they were chased by the slave riders mm. in the 17th century probably. Yeah, the Turks, and they yeah. are really on the fringe of the Nuba mountains because mm. it, was it was inhabited in other places so yeah. they, they took the less protected yeah. <laughs> area, you know. <laughs> and so it probably, I think that all those people were more or less living close uh, to mm. El Obeid mm. uh, four centuries ago, you know. Mm. Mm. And otherwise, you got people also Nubian in Darfur, the Midop that are in northern Darfur, yeah. the Birgit, that Birgit, are yes. at least the Birgit that spoke the language, because yeah. many the Birgit don't even know that they had a language before. There are so many, yeah. so few persons still yeah. speaking it. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, all every I would say every 30 years, we always find an old man <laughs> or an old woman who still speaks Birgit, and that lasts for more than one century. So oh, wow. the language is not yet dead, but yeah. it takes a long time to kill a language, yes. you know. Uh, and so you got the Birgit in uh, close to Nyala. Mm -hmm. uh, and finally, if you see forms of Nubians who have disappeared, there's this Soba Nubian, mm -hmm. uh, and you got also Haraza, Jebel Haraza, yeah, that where. Uh, Nubian language has been recorded as late as 1930, mm. uh, 1933, I think, uh, 92, uh, sorry, sorry, 23. There was uh, an article in Sudan and Nubia giving uh, a list of 42 words uh, translated into uh, Haraza Nubian. Yes. Uh, and after it disappeared. So we have only mm. this list of <laughs> 42 Arabic words translated by a faqih yeah. uh, in Arabic uh, uh, script, which doesn't make things very easy, you know, <laughs> because <laughs> you have to, it's a bit like the list uh, of Merotic person, old Merotic yes, person in yeah. Egyptian, it's, uh, you have to understand exactly what kind of vowel and consonant. Correct, order. correct. But so all those, <coughs> all those things which are finally comprising the big part of uh, today's Sudan, you know, uh, are Nubians. And even even the, the, the Arabized tribes like Ja'aliya Sha, Sha, and Shaigiya, yeah. they used to speak a Nubian language? <coughs> it, it's clear for the for, for the Ja'alin. Uh, for the Shagin, yeah, probably also, yeah. Do you remember that report that... that fa the but it, of course, it contradicts all their tra own traditions that are always trying to find to find origin uh, uh, um, in Yemen, in uh, Mecca, in, uh, yeah. uh, sometimes in Tunis, uh, etc. Uh, um, and it's not impossible that there have been an ancestor of very... Uh, a Faki or somebody yes. who was from those tribes, but after so many marriage and everything, uh, mm. uh, so the, I would say that the, uh, if the, if any, if there was one Arabic drop of blood, yeah. it's, uh, it's, 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 out, it's uh, grown in a yes, notion yes. of Nubian, Nubian blood. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. And so, so if you say Nubian blood, so what happened to the Merwais? They're still here. They speak Nubian. They speak Nubian, right? <laughs> Everybody converts to Nubian. So doesn't that tell you if the Merwai started speaking Nubian and they lost and they lost their Merwetic language, that means the Nubians themselves they weren't an enemy. Because so if they were if the Nubians were occupying the Merwetic territory and taking over the kingdom, the Merwai will always be in fight with them. And no. they wouldn't adopt their language. The Mer I would say there were people before the Merites came into the Nile Valley. And those people have been Meroticized. Mm -hmm. And after the Nubian came, became the Halit, uh, adopted the Christian religion, spread it all over. Mm -hmm. So the Merite became Nubianized. Mm. But and it's actually the in France, uh, the Gauls have been fighting against the Romans, mm -hmm. and after they they, they, they became uh, Gallo-Romans, speaking a Roman language. <laughs> oh, okay, so that's normal linguistically. The same, I would say, uh, <coughs> when the Arabs came from the Arab Peninsula yeah. and fought against the different, uh, I would say, in look in Egypt. Yeah. In Egypt, you people sometimes think that all those that are not Copts. Yes are from the descent of the Arabic, but it's impossible. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. There were, we don't know exactly, but no more than 40,000 uh, mm -hmm. uh, Arab s warriors Correct. Uh, coming with uh, Abdullah, um, no, what's his name? Abdullah. 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 Abdull
and then it was in a population which was Egypt was a very populated country something right. like nine millions it was a lot at this time nine millions of inhabitants so it was a drop of blood correct against correct. and still they've they've been fighting against the Egyptian at the beginning mm. or Byzantine Egyptian I would mm. say but still finally today uh, those uh, the descent of those who have been fighting the Arabs are considering themselves as, as Arab and yeah. speaking Arabic correct, correct and you who try not everywhere in the world you would yes. say uh, no there's no reason why the children of the children of the children mm. of uh, adversaries would still fight together. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. uh, and can you please repeat the story about the, the, the Meroitic kings as well, they, the one you were telling me when the uh, phone shut off. Do you remember they were telling me about in, in Naga? Oh yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah, that is about, but it's still mystery. You know, we have to, I say that probably the Meroitic language didn't uh, exists much after mm -hmm. uh, the conversion uh, mm -hmm. of the Nubians to Christianity. Okay. Uh, just because I think that, as I as told you uh, before, uh, religion is a very important um, Fact, mean yeah, of yeah. influence yes. for uh, changing cultures and languages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But still, in Naga, there have been something strange found. Mm -hmm. um, in Naga, there are all those uh, rams, mm -hmm where originally there was the, the, the statue, a small statue of King uh, uh, Natakamani, mm -hmm. uh, just between the posts, you know, uh, uh, against the torso of the, the, the ram. And it has been hacked out, mm -hmm. and one of them has been taken, but not from Naga, from uh, El Hassa probably, and sent to the cathedral. Of the Christian Cathedral in Soba, <laughs> mm -hmm. and now it is in the gardens of the of the museum, the, the wow. Soba Ram. Okay, uh, and probably I don't know. You know, the Ram, uh, at least the the Lamb, mm -hmm. uh, is the figure of Christ uh, in the the, the the Christian religion, and maybe it it was they wanted to have a kind of a cheap uh, 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 statue of. Uh, of ram or statue mm. of a uh, lamb uh, which they would have nearly uh, for nothing <laughs> because they would just to hack <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the, yeah. the ancient king and so those statues of king has been found in Naga by the, the team of Berlin wrapped in a fabric you know and buried mm. and so they were accompanied I think there was some charcoal or anything so kind of material uh, organic material you can analyze with uh, radi radiocarbon analysis mm -hmm. And finally, very strangely, the date uh, was in the 10th century AD. Mm -hmm. It means that around year 1000, mm -hmm. there was somebody in Naga who still collected those statues and buried them nearly religiously who had respect for the Marotic kings and maybe for the Marotic religion. But as I said, uh, there were probably pockets of paganism yes. in different parts of Sudan. Correct, correct. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's, as you said, also with that kind of pockets, the Meroitic might still existed until that time. Or no? Yeah, but I say the Meroites mm. existed with another language. I would say the, the, the Nubians coming were probably not so numerous. You mm. know, it's not another population that To invaded. replace yeah. everybody, yeah. yeah. I would say that genetically, mm. The, the Nubians of today mm. are probably 90% mm. before the Merites, that is, uh, those population mixed a bit with uh, Proto-Egyptian or something that way, that is a mixture, in fact, between African and Egyptian, yes. which were there since Neolithic times. Mm. And from the 10% uh, that remains, maybe 5% Nubian, mm -hmm. <laughs> Nubian from West, from West, you yeah. know, and 5% uh, Merotic, you okay. know. Okay. No, nobody has a pure nature. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And a little bit, uh, as and still, I'm forgetting yeah. a lot of other people. You know, yeah. there have been even Bosnians yeah. <laughs> in Nubia, uh, Beja also. Yeah. 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 Uh, the question right now, genetically speaking, the differences between the Nubian and uh, Hill Nubian, Mountain Nubians, are completely different than the Nile Nubians. Yeah, of course. It, 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 it was really striked. A stroke. Uh, sorry, a uh, stroke. The first researcher who saw the. the the resemblance, uh, of course, the the family between, uh, especially uh, Birgit mm -hmm. and Nine Nubian, mm -hmm. 
and so they look so different. Mm. So there's a first article, it was not uh, seen so quickly. Lepsius already saw that uh, language, I can't remember, I think it was Karko mm -hmm. in, the, uh, in the Nuba Mountains. I think we have a small list, a small list of Karko in Lepsius uh, uh, Nubische Grammatik mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, from uh, 1871, yes. uh, 79. I have that book, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, but it's really, it is uh, MacMichael. MacMichael who first so, uh, gave a really a word list to show the resemblance and it was in one of the first issues of Sudan, and, uh, of, uh, Sudan Notes and Records, you know. Yes. Uh, it was in probably uh, in 19, 1916, I think, or something that way, yeah? mm. something that maybe a bit later, I can't remember. And so there's, uh, I, I can't remember the name, or it's not Nubian origin, it is, was Ilosan. Uh, somebody else, so, so something else. But in this article, he really wonder how those people who are really, really very African-looking, I would say, at the core of Africa, like Birgit, mm -hmm. being of the same linguistic family that mm -hmm. what they call at this time Barabra, mm -hmm. that is the the Nine Nubians. Mm -hmm. And he said probably, which was right, probably uh, they changed in this. This time, people thought that Nine Nubian, f in fact, fled to Dar to Darfur and Hill Nubian mm -hmm. uh, in front of the Nuba invasions uh, on the on, on no no sorry uh, uh, the Islamic invasion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, he would explain that after they married uh, in the country in Darfur, mm -hmm. and so they became uh, more similar to Darfuri. Mm. In fact, we know that know that it's the opposite and that it's much more ancient. You know, uh, it means that the the nine Nubians came into the valley. They didn't come to the valley; they came around the valley, but they couldn't get inside <laughs> because it was kept by the Merite. Yeah. <laughs> and let's say that uh, their first appearance is uh, it's difficult to say. We we have we have seen some auxiliary troops. Uh, in the 18 dynasty, during the 18 dynasty, that has a name Maga, which might be already the ancestor of Makuria. Mm. Uh, Makuria or Migi, which is the, the ancient name of uh, Nubaid, Nubaidia, you know. Mm. Uh, so I'm not sure, but I think that little and little they went closer to the Nile, mm -hmm. uh, and finally they invaded it. Okay. Yeah. But um, in fact, and some of them stayed in Darfur and in Kordofan mm -hmm. and of course they didn't yeah. mix <coughs> and what the different the genetic difference is just because I would say that uh, in Darfur and Kordofan people yeah. have the genetic of their language mm. or the language of their genetics mm. <laughs> and in the Nile Valley people speak in fact uh, the last uh, fashionable uh, language in the valley, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but in fact, they genetically, they are going back much, uh, much farther yeah. and to a mixture, a uh, very clear mixture of uh, population of uh, living in Egypt uh, in Neolithic times yeah. and uh, South Sudanese population. Okay. So the, the, the main question also, like I, I, from the way you're talking right now, I don't see you seeing any differences between <coughs> the Nuba from Soba and the Nuba from Makuria and Nubatia. Do you think they are the same people? Because what some do you people mean same people? Like they, they came into the Nile Valley at the same time? Yeah, but they were already differentiated. They differentiated themselves during the kingdoms. And they no, each one of them when they, they came, the some of them were already completely different. Mm -hmm. And I think that <coughs> uh, one of the the Nubian languages are close to each other. Mm -hmm. They are so close, uh, as, as close, for example, as Germanic uh, languages today, ex yeah, including English, let's say. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so it shows that they didn't split such a long time ago. And in my opinion, probably they split, uh, I would say, around uh, 1000, let's say at the beginning of the first millennium of Christ. Mm -hmm. But after, there were a little everywhere. Mm -hmm. And the first mention we have is in, uh, in the, the works of Eratosthenes, mm -hmm. who was uh, 
the librarian of the Library of Alexandria and famous for having uh, uh, reckoned uh, the, uh, the size of the earth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and he writes that the Nuba are living uh, in separate kingdoms, you mm -hmm. see already, yeah. and living west of the Nile in Libya. But Libya means west of the Nile. Uh, yes. West of the Nile. Uh, it doesn't mean in uh, real today's Libya. Libya yes. uh, in real Libya. Uh, um, and uh, yes, separated, uh, living in Libya, and the great people. Yeah. In Greek, mega ethnos. Mm. You know? Population-wise, great. Yeah, it means numerous. Yes. You know? Numerous and divided in uh, many different kingdoms. Mm -hmm. And so, and that was written, you know, in. 280 before Christ. Mm -hmm. That is a lot of time before Nubin really uh, went into uh, the Nile Valley. That is during the the, uh, at the, the moment of the fall of Meroe. Because yeah. I don't believe at all, but I cannot come back, it will be too too, too long to explain. Yeah. I don't believe at all Nubians were st already in the Nile Valley uh, before this time. Correct, correct. They tried. Uh, yeah. They tried because yes. uh, the, the climate was changing. Uh, it was harder and harder to find fresh uh, uh, pasture for the uh, for the, the cattle, animals, yeah. for yeah. the cattle, you yeah. know, and so uh, of course they were looking at the green uh, meadows of uh, <laughs> the <laughs> around Nile, the Nile, yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah, but they yeah. couldn't get in, you know. Yeah. Um, and so you see, just by this quoting of Eratosthenes, mm -hmm. that it is different kingdoms. Okay. And otherwise, we can. S I, I've been studying a long time, and that has been hard, and I change my mind very often, and still. People have been studying it with me and telling bullshit more than me. <laughs> but the problem is the position of Nobin, which has always. Why Nobin uh, is so different? Uh, Nobin uh, is 90% the same vocabulary, mm -hmm. but the 10% are all the most common words, so they can't, can't understand mm -hmm. each other. No, is it mixed with ancient Egyptians? No. Mostly? No, no, no. no. Okay. Not more than the other. Not more than the others. Not more than the other, but Nubin is, of course, also an uh, old Nubian. Mm. Nubian is the, the ancestor of Nubin. It's the same already. Mm. And finally, after. So I, I, I found that was obvious that there were some words who were not Nubin. Mm -hmm. uh, so they were coming from another language. Mm. And this, the closest language to this uh, special Nubin words is Nara. Nara? Yeah. Sometimes it's, uh, I would say, shocking, you know. <laughs> Nara For example, uh, wow. short. Yeah. Short in Dongolawi is Nori. Mm -hmm. Nori or Nor, I can't remember exactly. Um, and Nori can be found, Dor, etc., in other languages. It's purely Nubian. Yeah, okay. the, the, the root is Noor or something that way. Uh, and in, uh, in Nubian it is uh, Kudur. Kudur. Yeah. <coughs> And in, uh, in Nara, it's kudurku. Kudurku. Yes, and ku is adjectival. It's the suffix, you know. Yeah. So the, the rest is kudur. Wow. <laughs> it's actually the same. Mm. <laughs> and there are many words like that. <laughs> Not just one, many words. Yeah, yeah no, no, many words, yeah. And, and that, that's why you went with the theory that Nara has something to do with the pre karma or Karman era? Yeah, but it's difficult to say as uh, I wrote an article starting with uh, portrait don't speak. <laughs> 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 it's true that uh, if you don't have written records, mm. either from the, s the culture itself, you know, mm. or from neighbor cultures who yeah. had scripts, like yes. the Egyptian, yes. it's really difficult to prove anything, you know. Correct. correct. You, it's not from um, portraits or uh, cultural remain of even uh, uh, funerary tradition that you can be sure. Okay. What we can say is that this is a lot of speculation, I would say. Nara and Kudama, their neighbors, are also Nilo Saharan speaking people, but it's uh, for a family which is a bit uh, remote. Mm -hmm. uh, Nara uh, probably can be linked with the, the culture of Gash, the Gash culture, Correct. who lived uh, between the second and the first uh, millennium before Christ, mm -hmm. uh, really in the nearly close to the place they are, between Kassala and Barentu, I would say, yes. uh, between uh, 
in Eastern uh, Sudan and uh, Western Eritrea. You mm -hmm. know. And, uh, and so the, the gash culture has some features that are really fitting with the sea group. For example, they have got the same uh, uh, the same uh, patterns for uh, ceramic. They got stamps, mm. Mm -hmm. mushroom mm -hmm. stamps yes, yes, yes. that are the same uh -huh. uh, from one civilization to the other. And also, they tomb. They are putting stellas around the tumulus mm -hmm. uh, above the tomb. You know. Yeah. So from that, can we say that those cultural traits? Mm. It means that they were sharing the same language. It's very hard to tell, very hard to tell. It's yeah. very hard. In my opinion, for the time being, mm. what I say, but it's still speculation, and if it were wrong, it wouldn't, of course, uh, uh, waste all my work, you know, yeah. of course. Yeah. This is just a, a hypothesis. Uh, I think that, in fact, Proto-Nara had split. Nara were coming also from Wadi Hoa. Mm. But they are far away, mm. and so I suppose that they pass through the Adbara because mm. they are not far from the the spring of the Adbara, you know. Mm. Uh, and the Adbara, as a name, Astabaras in all or Boras, uh, yeah. in all in Greek, uh, and which is translation probably of old uh, Merotic and still Adbara later. Mm -hmm. It's sure that it is the river of the Barias. Mm. So it probably we can imagine that they pass. They came for Wadi Hoa, yeah. and they passed through they, with their caton. Uh, they, they, they needed, of course, water and everything, so they passed uh, along the Adbara and went to Eritrea. Mm. And so, um, in meanwhile, you know, uh, some of them stayed in the, along the Nile Valley, and it would be the Sea Group. Mm. Not sure. <coughs> And probably another group uh, stayed in the, in the surrounding, mm. but probably outside of the valley. And this group, we know there are plenty of uh, the, the Greek writers uh, are giving us the name of numerous tribes, and yeah. among them maybe the Megabaroi mm -hmm. could be a good because there's this word bar inside, but there's also the Atiabaroi, 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 and Megabaroi. Uh, They're both Greeks. But the name Greeks? Yeah, that's from Greek okay. transcription. You got this bar inside, uh -huh. maybe it's one of them, and these people mixed with the Nubian tribe mm -hmm. outside of the valley. Mm -hmm. And when they get inside the valley, they were the Nobades, mm -hmm. and they were already mixed. And so the core of this vocabulary, which is not Nubian, mm -hmm. and looks like Bara, is the, the, what remains of the language of this tribe. Mm, interesting. See, that is, yeah, but it's very, really <coughs> very speculative, especially for C group, I would say. Correct, correct. Yeah. That's, that's, so very that's the last, I would say. It, it has been very long to think about it, to see what was possible, what was not. In the first time, I thought that maybe the, this um, foreign words in Nobin mm. were the rest of the language of the C, C group. Mm. And after, I thought it was impossible because. In this case, if you would have a culturally different group in Nubia uh, during the Marotic time, you would have traces of them. Correct, correct. If they kept their language, they probably kept their customs because language is the weakest part of the culture, you know, it can disappear. Yes. And funerary customs, for example, are the last to disappear. Correct, correct. So, uh, so, so you must, the only solution is that when the Bedes came into the valley, mm. they were already mixed. Mm. With, of course, an advantage for the Nubian part, yes, yes. Um, because the syntax and everything is Nubian. Mm -hmm. There are only some words that are that are <coughs> close to another. Okay. But you've seen this example, and the one I gave you before, uh, the the quoting of Eratosthenes, shows that Nubians were already. Uh, split campaigns. in different uh, tribes when they entered. Sure. And also we have some mention of Nubians uh, in the Napatan texts, mm. especially in Astasin and uh, Arsiotev, that is the 4th century before Christ. Okay. Uh, they are going to war against different groups of Nubians, mm. uh, which has different names. Which are the Medid, right? You said the no, no, not the Medid. The Medid is uh, the, the probably the major. It's uh, Meh. Something. The meh. 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 Mm, 
Mehet in Rwanda, and the, and also there is the Mehet from Dekene, and the Mehet from another place. Uh -huh. <laughs> I can't remember the second place. So how, how did he, how did he attach them to, to Nubians? Why why he said the Mehet will be Nubians? Because the <coughs> Nubians have two names in Marotic. Mm -hmm. uh, they can be called Nub Nuba. Okay. Which is not a good name. It's a derog derogatory name. Yeah. And sometimes. They used the real name, that is the self name mm -hmm. of the Nuba, mm -hmm. which was, and they translated Mahu. Mahu. The the he pos, poses some problems about the. It, it might be Mahu, maybe Magu, maybe Mangu. And, and where did you get this translation from, though? From one of the inscriptions? How do you know they named themselves Magu or Mahu? No, it's, it's in the Marotic text. In the Marotic text. In the Marotic text, do you know, you, you find it in the first. Uh, it appears first in a text uh, from a viceroy of Nubia, I think Khalala <laughs> it's a very complicated name, yeah. um, which is the, probably the first century AD, beginning of the first. Okay. And after they have been even, you know, the, it's a bit like in Rome, you know, the Roman Empire. Yeah. That is, of course, Romans were fighting against barbars, mm -hmm. barbarians, yeah. <laughs> especially Germanic tribes, you know. Mm -hmm. But sometimes they would have a alliance with some of them against the other. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not so easy. It's not Germans against Romans. Mm -hmm. uh, and it seems that it has been a bit the same. We have a text uh, telling the name, the name of a king of the Nuba. Mm -hmm. And apparently, there's even an voice of the Meroitic, at least uh, the nu Lower Nubia, which was called Akine, mm -hmm. uh, of this, the province of Northern uh, of the Lower Nubia. They are in voice to the king of the Mahu, mm -hmm. and we have even his name. And his, uh, his name, as far as I remember, is uh, something like Tarutiri, mm -hmm. uh, Tarutiri, mm -hmm. uh, which might mean uh, something like. Uh, the praised one or something. For, for ti, Tiri at the end, I'm not so sure. But for Taru, it exists in Nubian and it means uh, uh, to love, to worship, to uh, give uh, and they have respect to somebody. They have the letter Ha in Nubian? Taru Tiri? The problem is, yeah, but it's in, in, uh, it's in Marotic. Mm. There is really, I tell you, for the time being, I have a big reflection on yeah. the value of this letter. Mm -hmm. And it's not quite clear for the time being. Okay. It's pro probably, I say her, but it was probably not Something her. Else, okay. Yeah. Okay. No, in Old Nubian, no. Okay. Normally, you don't have this letter. Okay. And I suppose that in Meretic, you had it only in words borrowed from uh, Egyptian. From Egyptian. But it's a long demonstration because you must take every word with it. Yeah. And each time you got connection with... Mm. I will give just one example for... for, for your followers. For the audience, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I will <laughs> I will just give a very simple example and they will understand how important it can be just change the interpretation of a, of a consonant. So in the Marotic inscription, uh, funerary in Marotic inscription, mm -hmm. at the end uh, they pray the gods to give uh, the deceased uh, bread and water. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you got verbs meaning probably to eat bread, uh, make him eat bread, mm -hmm. make him or her uh, drink water. And this drink is written H plus E or O. So in the ancient uh, interpretation it would be H or H. Mm. But it seems that in fact in local words this H was pronounced Nga. Nga. Yeah, and so it will be Nge in this case. Nye. Yeah, and in yeah. Old Nubian to drink is Nye. Wow. <laughs> so you see that yes. it makes a change. <laughs> correct, correct, yeah, it makes a big difference, yeah. But yeah. in some other words, it's not so, you see, for example, Maho, yeah. uh, the name of, the self name of the Nubian, that mm. is the real name they should wear today, mm -hmm. <laughs> if they would have not been all those historical complications, <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, is probably that there are two reconstructions. Uh, it can be, probably it was Magur. Magur. Magur or, and I reconstruct also Magi. So Nubedia, the, the, the real name of Nubedia, because Nubedia is Greek, you know, yeah. uh, and it includes Nuba, which means slaves, and 
the old Nubians knew that it means <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't like it, you know. Yeah. So the, in Greek they say, okay, ego nuba, ego theodosios nuba, it's yeah. written in Philae, you know, yeah. it's a, a graffito from the the the, the sixth century, uh, yeah. I, I Theodosius, I'm I am a Nuba, but it's in Greek. If you would have written in Old Nubian, which still didn't exist, you wouldn't have used Nuba, mm. because the name for the Nubades was Migiti for one person, Migiti. and Migi in the plural. Migi, Migi, Migi for Nubi, uh, Nubadia, for Nubadia, yeah, and for Makoria. Magoria. Magoria. It was written K, K, but it's impossible to have K in middle position. So in, uh, Magoria in instead of Magoria. So it was a, a writing of Magoria. Magur. And uh, if there's any inscriptions. So and the Birgit called themselves called themselves Murgi. Murgi, Birgit. And the, yeah, and yeah. They, it can be shown that in fact there have been what we call a metathesis, mm -hmm. and originally it was Muguri. Muguri. So you have got a very good evidence for a name like Magur yeah. with different kind of uh, what we call vowel copying. Mm -hmm. I beginning Magi becoming Migi mm -hmm. um, and for the, the Birgid uh, Magur becoming Mugur. Mugur. Well, this is quite, I hear uh, myself uh, when I speak Arabic I rarely say Khartoum, I say very often Khartoum. Mm. And I'm not alone. I didn't yeah. invent it, you know. Yeah, no, you're right. You're uh, right. You have yeah. this vowel copying, which yeah. is quite. This exists even in Arabic. In, in good Arabic, uh, you for twenty, uh, you don't say ishrin. Mm. You say ashrin. Correct, ashrin. Yeah. yeah, the e yeah. is from the the e, which is at the end of ishrin. You know, mm. it's vowel copying. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah, that, that's the accent. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and what about the the people from Soba? What they call themselves? Oh, uh, we don't know. Well, nobody knows. Okay. We don't know. Uh, the, the the Arab chronicle make a big difference between Dar and Nuba uh -huh. in the north and Aloha, Halua, Alua in the uh, in the south. Yeah. But still, it seems that anyway there were Nubians. Yeah, they they were speak Nubians, but they they I don't even know what to say. Like different groups. I can't say different groups. Yeah. Right? The different yeah, groups. Well, I think that they are more or less at least the elite mm. uh, descend the descend of the. The Black Nuba mm -hmm. uh, from Ezana. Mm -hmm. From Ezana, the Black yeah. Nuba in Ezana inscription. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, and the Red Nuba. In fact, Nubia, uh, the, the Red, red Nuba. Nuba, yeah. It's, I would say in Ezana inscription, it speaks of the Red Nuba, yeah. which are probably the ancestors of Makurite. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the uh, Black and Nuba? And so it, they, we say Black Nuba, but it's not written Black Nuba in Ezana, but it's kind of uh, everybody has considered that if they are Red Nubas, they There's should black, be yeah. Black Nuba. And that makes sense, you know, yeah. And it makes sense, especially from Ethiopians, for yeah. which there are three uh, categories in the world mm -hmm. uh, that is the, the, the white man. Mm -hmm. uh, from Europe, Europe mm. the black men like the Baria, Shangula, etc., that are Africans, yeah. uh, uh, and themselves that are not African, they are red. <laughs> They're red. <laughs> yeah. Can you can you give me just like the list uh, uh, of uh, deciphered metaphoric words? Oof. Just the big ones. I want to I want to hear your pronunciation. Yeah, it is, you know the pronunciation. Of, since I'm not going to ask m, uh, to buy my bread in the morning in uh, I will buy it. in Merit, <laughs> 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 I would say that sometimes, yeah, soon, inshallah, they will be. I will uh, start uh, teaching of Meritic, the first in the wow, world. Wow, this yeah. great, great news! In Paris, great news. yeah, yes. in Paris, inshallah, yeah. it will be. Uh, it will be next uh, autumn. Inshallah, and you're going to make it like an online program. Like a online program, so people can access an online. That's that'd be a good if, idea. If one of my pupils is uh, caring about it, otherwise I'm not <laughs> sure that I will have time. You know, I'm not even on. You're uh, gonna you're gonna lecture. I'm so not gonna on be Facebook. I'm not no, etc. Because it would be too much time. No, there. you're gonna be lecturing in the same class, and while they lecture in the same yeah. class, they can take video of you. Okay, I uh, I care about that by asking my uh, uh, more gifted pupils <laughs> for, That's good. for this yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, you're gonna you're gonna say it in French? Is it French? Or oh or yeah, French? sorry. Oh yeah, French, okay, yeah. French, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm sorry, but yeah. it's, it will be yeah. in Paris, so yeah. uh, <laughs> it doesn't mean oh, that. Uh, but you know, I've been teaching Meritic in uh, in English many times, especially in the German universities, okay, where it was easier for me because my German is a bit uh, awkward. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we like, for example, you mentioned that the 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 name of the district, the northern district, uh, Akini. You said yeah. Akini. 
Yeah. And, and we were read it. The lady, one of the ladies who was presenting her first day, she was like, a kin. Yeah. Was, Not a kinny. See, that's why I wanted to know some of the yeah, I, some we, words. Yeah, we have good chance that it was, I'm not sure it's a kin, it can be a gin. A gin. Uh, but it's, at the end, there is a consonant, because when you say in, mm-hmm. akine, you put te, de, in, mm. you would say akinete. Akinete. Uh, and so, if if it was akin, it would be akinte, mm-hmm. and in this case, the n wouldn't be written. Okay. Because it's not written in front of another consonant. Mm-hmm. You know, by details like that, we yeah. can sometimes know, but not all the time. Mm-hmm. When you got e at the end, mm-hmm. for example, the the Candace, the mm-hmm. the Queen Mother, yes. is clearly kandake because kandake. we have full transcriptions mm-hmm. in uh, Latin and Greek. Mm-hmm. Is it kandake or kadike? No, no, it's kandake. Kandake. In Meroitic. In Meroitic, yeah. It's exactly the the pronunciation is given in uh, in Greek and it's quite uh, faithful. So the e at the end is pronounced, mm. and so it's not kandak. Mm. Yeah. And it's written in fact just k d k e kadake. For the same reason I told you that is n it's not written mm. in front of a d. Yes, yes. That's yeah. why we always pronounce it that way. I think we're doing it wrong. We yeah, 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 but uh, here it's perfectly clear okay. thanks to to transcription in other languages. Mm. But sometimes, probably, there were N mm-hmm. and we don't. For example, the elephant. Mm-hmm. Uh, in this case, it's not N in M because it's B. Uh, mm. It's normal. <laughs> you got some harmony yeah. between. So the elephant is written abore. Abore. And it's the first part of abore B, mm-hmm. written abore P, which is the name of Musawarat. Mm. which means probably the place of the elephant. Mm. What a pain. That explains why we have elephant everywhere, yes. you know, yeah. because the elephant is not a god. Um, uh, no, there is a, a big Musawarat elephant. It's not elephant, Ganesh, yeah. Uh, yeah. like in, yeah, uh, yeah, in the, the, now, the Indian yeah. religion. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the, so, and so the elephant is written abore, the E is n- probably not pronounced, uh, the O is pronounced U, mm-hmm. and so you should have abur. Abur. But you can reconstruct in Old Nubian, mm-hmm. Angur, Angur, Angur. Mm-hmm. Uh, in Old Nubian. You cannot reconstruct it uh, from Nine Nubian because everywhere it's feel. Mm, <laughs> it has been replaced. Yes. Uh, I've been told by a Nubian uh, that uh, Angul, Ang- you say, no, I think you say Angur, would still be known in su- place in Sukkot. Mm. But for the time being, I never heard. Okay. Uh, it is Angul, because it's normal to have L yeah. in uh, Card of a Nubian, when mm-hmm. you reconstruct a protocol of a Nubian. Yeah. Yeah? And so when you got Gu mm-hmm. in, Marotic, in Nubian, mm-hmm. you got Ba in Marotic. Mm-hmm. So for example, the plural, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, uh, the plural in uh, Old Nubian is Gu. Mm-hmm. Mug is the, the dog, mm-hmm. and the plural is Mugrigu. Mm-hmm. Yeah? Uh, and the plural uh, in Marotic, for example, the dog is uh, is wal. Mm-hmm. Uh, one dog is uh, le, the dog is uh, walla, mm. and the dogs is uh, wallaba. Mm. So ba is gu. Mm, mm. So no ba is no good. Mm. The slave. Yeah. Yeah. And here the same. So angur is ambur. Ambor. It's Ambor. It could be Ambar normally, but here it, they, 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 the U is uh, preserved. And so in this case, it's not probably not Abor, but Ambor, because we have this nasal mm-hmm. in, uh, in Nubian. Yeah. And you find it uh, in other languages. Uh, in uh, in uh, Mararit, it's Ambar. Ambar. Uh, Ambar. It's Ambat, uh, in an, uh, I think, in uh, Middle. Mm, uh, middle. So you see that, uh, okay, uh, this is one example of mm. this nasal which is not written. Okay. Uh, but we have to uh, uh, reconstruct it uh, thanks to the comparison with Nubian. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, other words, uh, oh, oh, two words that are quite interesting, it's the words for the deceased so important for Sudanese that are bread and water. Mm-hmm. So bread is written, water, start with water, it's written ato. Ato. Uh, you must know that a at the beginning 
when it's you've got this letter, this particular letter A at the beginning, it can be A or U. Mm -hmm. For example, it's used in the name of Osiris, mm -hmm. which is written Asori, but it's pronounced us, us, Usuri, Ushuri. Uh, Ushuri? Ushuri, yeah, in, uh, in uh, Egyptian it's Usir. Usir and Ushuri. Yeah. They got their own yeah, the own Yeah, the envoy, the ambassador. Mm -hmm. It's written apote, mm -hmm. but it's pronounced uput. uput. Exactly oh. like in Egyptian, uput mm -hmm. or iput in Egyptian. Okay. Yeah, so you see, but of course it's borrowed. Mm -hmm. And so uh, in the case of uh, water, so still when you have a at the beginning, you are never sure it's mm -hmm. a or u. Yes. But in this case, we have the different things. We have first we can reconstruct the, the word for water in Eastern, Proto, uh, Northern, East Sudanic, I'm sorry for yeah. the, this, uh, okay. right, I would say for the mother language of Nubian and Marotic. Yeah. Huh? Because in, Marot in, uh, in uh, ancient Nubian, it's S-C, uh, Et-Tu in, uh, et -tu, et -tu, uh, in, uh, in Cordophon Nubian. Mm -hmm. And so you can reconstruct something like uh, originally ST. 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 Mm -hmm. uh, and ST became double T in uh, Cordophon Nubian or double S mm -hmm. in, uh, in Dongolawi where you have SC mm -hmm. uh, for the water. And so the A is coming, this, there have been vowel copying at least. Not yeah. vowel copying, but what we call apophony. Yes, sorry, I would try not to be too technical, but it's complicated. <laughs> You need uh, when you are describing the motor of uh, a car, you need still to use exactly, special water, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> special uh, names. Uh, no, I understand. Yeah, I understand. yeah, yeah. And so, um, right to make a uh, long story short, uh, you can reconstruct Asti and prove that the A at the beginning was a A originally, so mm -hmm. it's Asti. Mm -hmm. And so, and then we have those Greek names of the Nile, yeah. uh, Astapus, Astaboras, etc. So we know that it was finally in Old Meroitic Asta, then it happens the same, that the ST became the double T like in Code of Nubian, okay. and so it must have been at the moment Atta. And for a reason we don't know, which can be found also in the name of Queen Amani Shareto, for mm. example, who is sometimes Amani Charete. Uh, two became the the, the, the hand instead of two, ta. Mm -hmm. And so, result, the wa water was pronounced at two. Mm -hmm. And still it passed into Arabic in at bara. <laughs> at bara. <laughs> the yeah. at in at bara is yeah. from Merotic. Correct, correct. Mm -hmm. And so, let's pass to the bread. The bread is written at. And the problem is to know what to compare it with. It have been incredibly, uh, you know, people are at hypotheses that were completely strange. Even with Nara, you know, you know the word for uh, for word for bread in Nara is tes. Tes. But to see a, a resemblance between at and tes, apart the t, there's nothing in common, you know. Yeah. Uh, yes. And so you must, in fact, have a look at the word for sorghum, dura. Because, the dura, yeah. yeah, because originally it was the bread of Sudanese. You know? Correct, the dura. The yes. bread. Yes. Bread in Sudan is a recent uh, importation from, uh, like, like fool, uh, from uh, Egypt. Mm. But the good thing with fool is that it can be uh, cultivated in Sudan, yeah. and uh, the bread is made with uh, wheel uh, with. Uh, Corn. With flour, yeah, which flour. is which is imported. Yeah, wheat is yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, before the before yeah. that, people used to u use dura and especially mm. has, uh, hasida. Yeah, hasida, uh, yes. Hasida made, made with dura. And hasida and was a food for the the, the Merwites and all. Probably, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Sorghum was very very common. Probably wheat was cultivated, but uh, in uh, in Lower Nubia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, let's, so you must have a look at uh, different words for dura, and it's not, not, not very interesting, it's very different according to... But what you find is a common word for grain, mm -hmm. cereal. Yes. And this in uh, Nubian is very diverse, In generally is uwe, uwi, mm -hmm. and in Birgit it's uzi, uzi, because they are the only one to have not lost the S which was originally here. Mm -hmm. 
So finally you can see that probably uh, the, the sorghum, then the dura, was something like usti or usudi. Mm. And if it is usti, there is still this st, mm -hmm. and we have seen that in Meroitic, st mm -hmm. become double t. Mm -hmm. And the t of Nubian is most of the time cha mm -hmm. in Meroitic. So this at the bread, which normally we could imagine that it was atta, because you know uh, uh, when you got single t, you must add a because it's a syllabic language, and a is the vowel, the mm. defective vowel. You know, yes. Like in, in Indian, Indian languages, when you write, the, yeah. you don't write the vowels. If you don't write a vowel, it's a. It's uh, the, the, the vowel, defective vowel, the yeah. vowel uh, which is automatic. And so it looks like atta, but in fact, you can prove through Nubians that it was pronounced. Utta, and okay. this time it was not I, it was U at the beginning. Utta. So when they were asking for bread and water, it oh. was, I would say, nearly poetic. There was an alliteration. Mm -hmm. They were asking for Attu and Utta. Mm -hmm. Attu and Utta. Okay, that yeah. will do. <laughs> oh yeah, that, that's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really sorry, that, but no, I that, want that to. No, it's not like the, the complication, the, the meaning of self, it's the complicated work you've done. No, yeah. the, the complication is to, I could have told you, okay, uh, water is uh, at two mm -hmm. and, uh, and uh, bread is utta and no, but no the, the, explanation. No, no, the explanation is very important because a lot yeah. of guys, they yeah, specialize. Yeah, that's it. Yes. I, I try to explain you yeah. and sometimes, but this time I could reconstruct the pronunciation, things of Nubian, mm -hmm. sometimes of Greek, you yeah. see. Yeah, no, I like, uh, that. I like that. But sometimes, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, if the word has nothing to do uh, uh, with Nubian, which can happen, it's they are related languages. It doesn't mean that they have all the same words, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, in this case, it's very, very difficult to know. Um, I'm trying to find a word for which I have no clue whatsoever, but it becomes rare, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. This. This. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I don't that, find That's fine, I know yeah. you're tired and it's been yeah, a long day. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to... Let me to ask you just... Uh, I'm, I'm a bit yeah, tired yeah, also. I, I really like I, I'm trying to find yeah. a word for yeah. which I have no uh, idea at all of the way it can pr be pronounced. But there are... Um, the, the, the problem is that you can always have an N or mm. an M which is not written. Mm. And each time you got A, mm. you cannot know a part if you got special... Kandake, you know that A at the end is A because of Greek. Yes. But the king, or, or the queen, mm. but at least the ruler, mm. is written Kore, mm. and we know it's pronounced Kur. Kur. We but know it by the Egyptian uh, sources, you mm. know, but we know it also because if you put the article La yeah. after, mm. Kur La, it's impossible. It becomes Kurra. Mm. And so the L will disappear. And this is possible only if there were contact. Yes. And in order to have contact, you must not have a vowel between them. Mm -hmm. So we know it was not kure, it's kur. Otherwise, you wouldn't kur. have this assimilation. Yeah. But for other words, we, we are not. Akine, I told you, uh, uh, probably it's agine, but still something in progress, the problem of the consonant between two vowels. Um, this time, I can tell you that the mm -hmm. A was pronounced. But in other words, for some, I'm not sure. Mm. I told you that, uh, for example, uh, uh, the elephant is ambur. Ambur. But in fact, there is a e at the end. It could have been ambure, mm. and there would not be so many contradictions with the the related language. Mm. And other words, uh, with a, uh, sometimes you really don't know the scribe, for example. Yeah. The royal scribe. Is kurene. kurene. Is it kurene? Is it kuro? Because a can be a, a or nothing. Mm. <laughs> it uh, just remind reminded me of a story. So it could yeah. be kurene, kurene, yeah. kurene, kurene. Yeah. Kur yeah. Very, very kur options, yeah. Yeah. You see, yes, and, and there's yes. no no way to know. No way to know. And uh, do you agree? I mean, there is a lot of questions, but I don't want to take much of your time. But uh, I want to. Uh, like a lot of people when you mentioned there's no way to, to know there's a lot of people right now in, in my group and they're very they're good scholars they debating and trying to diffuse 
that the pronunciation of the Egyptian ancient language. They said the, Egypt, the pronunciation of those words are not correct. Then they're completely inaccurate. Most of you, them. You, you mean Egyptian? Old yes. Egyptian, yeah. Yeah. Do, do you think there is there is the Shambhalion is like it's not precise the decipherment of the ancient Egyptian? Uh, no, it's just, no, no, no. I would say what we have, we have two. No, the problem is not the consonants. Mm -hmm. The consonants are written. Yeah. We have. A fair, a fair idea of their pronunciation, thanks to Coptic mm -hmm. and thanks to transcription in other languages. The problem are the vowels, because it was like Arabic, a language where vowels were not really written. Mm -hmm. They used a special system to write, which is called uh, syllabic writing, to write foreign language and to have an idea of the vowel, but mm -hmm. an idea, nothing else. Okay, it's never precise. And so, uh, for the voyals, uh, we can reconstruct things. For example, in ancient Egyptian, that is a really medium Egyptian, old and medium Egyptian, mm. uh, we know that there were only three consonants, like in Arabic, A, E, and U, mm -hmm. uh, because this is the old uh, Afro-Asiatic system. Okay. But after, there have been, like I would say today in uh, in Sudanese Arabic, you are pronouncing also some O and some A mm -hmm. because of the, the the transformation of the the, the most of the time of R for O and A from R and O. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we we, we we can see the voice of Coptic. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that they have moved a lot, uh, but from the Coptic we can reconstruct them by a system which is quite mathematical, I would say. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, we have Greek transcriptions. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we have the voice. Yes. And we also have some Babylonian transcriptions. Mm -hmm. In the Babylonian text, especially the archives of uh, King Akhenaton in Tel mm -hmm. they were they found hundreds and hundreds of uh, diplomatic texts uh, that are the exchange between uh, the king of Egypt and uh, the different kings of the region uh, of Mesopotamia mm -hmm. uh, or, or just uh, near eastern countries, you know, yeah. where uh, Akkadian was, uh, Babylonian is the form of Akkadian, um, Babylonian was the diplomatic language. It was not Egyptian, it was yeah. curiously. Yes. <laughs> and so in this language you write the voyals. And so we can, this way, know yeah. the voyals, at least at the time of Akhenaton, that is around... Uh, uh, 15, 1300, uh, yeah. Yeah, 13... Uh, yeah. Uh, 13 something before, before Christ. Yeah. And so, you see, we, we have uh, some clues for, for the, the voyal mm -hmm. and some certain things uh, for the, the consonants. Okay. So it's not true. And one of the things is also that What's the point of being able to to say it as it was, unless you have an Egyptian religion mm. Mm, you, and you think that prayers must be, <laughs> must be told, yeah, precise, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, precise yeah, to yeah. works. Yeah. yeah. For me, I'm not praying a moon all the time, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. A I have uh, <laughs> a small uh, liking Respect for, for him. him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This is uh, yeah. having. Above my uh, desk in, uh, <laughs> uh, in my office, you know. <laughs> Interesting, yeah. yeah. But still, so otherwise, it will be a bit the same, you know. I will okay. start a teaching of narratic. Mm. What will I do? How will we trans pronounce the words? Mm. That uh, I already thought about it a long okay. time. Uh, so we know that A is the vowel, mm. uh, the normal vowel, where nothing is uh, written. So I suppose that we will instead of, for, for, for Egyptian normally you put E. Mm -hmm. It means that, uh, for example, beautiful is written N-F-R. Mm -hmm. uh, people will, scholars will say Nefer. Mm -hmm. uh, we know perfectly that it was probably, at the time of Akhenaton, it was probably pronounced Nofe. Okay. The R is being dropped for a long time already. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the, the, a, the, the first uh, vowel being O showed mm. by Coptic, you know. Okay. <coughs> but if you pronounce Nofe, mm -hmm. uh, so you won't pronounce the R at the, at the end. Mm -hmm. So it will make things a bit complicated correct, for correct. scholars, etc., for pupils. Yeah. 
And as it is not a language, as I said, you are buying the bread with or praying the gods correct, with. Correct, correct, yeah. You don't care that much about the pronunciation yeah. as long as your pupil or the scholars you are speaking with uh, can recognize the words. Yeah. So I think that for Merotic, I will just, instead of A, we will add A and put it everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, for some letters, for example, Q, Q is probably pronounced Qua, mm -hmm. and yes, we are not going to pronounce uh, Kalf. Mm. Uh, no, um, because it was not at all a cough anyway. I mean, it's not written Q, it's written Q because people thought that was the same than in Egyptian, but it's not true. So I would say, and I, s I know that P was pronounced B. Mm -hmm. B as in boy. Yeah, like yeah. in Nubian, like in Arabic, even yes. a P doesn't exist. Mm. And so the name of Prince, a Prince which is written P Q R, I will probably pronounce it Ba Kwa Ra. Bakwara. Bakwara. Yeah, okay. Q, I'm obliged because I must see make a difference between Q and K. Mm -hmm. And the P at the beginning, uh, there are plenty of evidence that was pronounced. But if I would say Bakwara, okay, there's no problem. So I say that I, I, say, I think that it's not such a big issue. Mm. It's an issue if you want to, I would say, an academic issue to know yeah. how it was pronounced, which is quite normal. Huh? Uh, and uh, it's true that the way we are pronouncing it is just uh, conventional. Correct, correct. I, I understand. <coughs> I understand. And it's not... I, I, some, especially some German scholars, who German can be a bit crazy sometimes, <laughs> and uh, some German scholars wanted to... And so in the, I have some articles of uh, some German colleagues who are trying to find a good pronunciation and so to to reconstruct, but in fact uh, they might be, at least if you say, okay, I, I read that, I know it's wrong, mm. it was not pronounced that way, mm. but at least you say, so you yeah. ne nobody will tell you after, yeah, but you made a mistake, uh, Correct. okay, uh, but if you are reconstructing a pronunciation, and after we find, uh, for example, Babylon, new, new inscription Babylon showing that it was not pronounced at all like that, yeah. So by tr by pronouncing or writing all the consonants and the vowels mm. of Egyptian, you make choices that might be speculative. Mm. So it's better not to make cho choices and to use a conventional, modest gotcha, uh, gotcha. writing. Yeah. So what, what, let me. So those those scholars and those researchers, basically, what they're trying to do, they're trying to correlate between the Meroitic pronunciation and current pronunciation from their languages whether Bedouet or Dungalawi or Mahasi, that's why they were very interested in knowing the proper pronunciation, because they have local languages, and, and that's what they debate most of the time. They debate, okay, we have Nefer, like you say, without the R, and they pronounce it with the R, and they want to know the proper pronunciation, at least for, uh, as well for ancient Egyptian, to compare it with their own local languages, and yeah. on and on, you know. You know, Sudan is very diverse, there's too yeah. many local languages. Yeah, but anyway, the Egyptian is not the ancestor of any language in uh, in Sudan. You know, Correct, yeah. the only language who got some. I would say there are some borrowing. I, I gave the the word for date. Yeah, uh, I think also the, there's a for tur turtle dove. Uh, it's menu in Egyptian and it's close in uh, Nubian. Mm. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, there's uh, this nice word which is orba. Orba. This is uh, the use for society. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's a reunion. Yeah. Reunion, and at first it was the name for wine, drinking wine. You know, yeah. wine. Yeah. Irep in uh, in in, uh, in Egyptian. Mm -hmm. uh, RP in uh, in Copt in mm -hmm. Coptic. Mm -hmm. So the word originally is borrowed from Egyptian, uh, probably through Meroitic but we don't have it in Nordic for the time being, mm. meaning wine. So after a party where you drink wine, mm. and from a party, a, re, uh, a meeting. Mm. A meeting, a company, a society. Yeah. yeah, okay. So there are some words from Egyptian, but really not a lot at all. Okay. And some of them passed clearly. Yeah, for example, gold. Yes. Gold is nab in, uh, in Nabin, mm. nobre in uh, nobre. Dongolawi. Yeah. yeah. And this is from Egyptian, uh, uh, old Egyptian Nabao. Nabao. Uh, old, really ancient Egyptian, that is middle Egyptian Nabao. And Coptic? 
Nubu. In, in Coptic, it's Nubu. Nubu. Okay. So you see that it cannot come from new because yeah. we, you don't have uh, this who in it. It's older. Yes. It's coming through Marotic and Marotic we have it. It's Nabara. Nabara. But it's still borrowed from Egyptian. You see. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. And so there are some Egyptian words then in Nubian, but not a lot. Yeah. Uh, you find some in Beja. Beja. And there is this strange word which is sweet, which is Nafir. Mm -hmm. yeah. Which it might be, uh, people say that in fact it's a cognate that is uh, the same, uh, descendant of the same root. Mm -hmm. it might make sense. Otherwise, they have uh, a word borrowed for horse, which is hatai. 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 Hatai in Egyptian is cheter, mm. and it means not a horse, but two horses together, a carriage. Okay. Carriage, okay. Yeah. So there's some words like yeah. that, but I would say the knowledge of. Uh, Egyptian uh, won't teach us a lot about uh, the languages of Sudan. Okay, gotcha. And the knowledge of Marotic, yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, allow me to ask you the final question before I set you free and uh, just brief answer to it. If somebody asks you right now, Dr. Riley, you've been working in Marotic language for a long time. Do you think you will, able, you will ever be able to decipher the Marotic language? It depends what you call by deciphering. You know? Reading all inscriptions freely. That doesn't exist for no ancient language. Even in Greek, there are some words we don't know the meaning of. Can we can we read after yeah. it, after it's the proportion mm. of words you don't understand who determines whether it's deciphered or not. Correct, <laughs> makes sense. Makes and sense. And it's a bit difficult to tell you for yes. time being. Uh, I would say it depends on the text. The, the the answer will never be clear and cut. You know, yeah. uh, depends from the text. I would say. Maybe your uh, your followers have seen somewhere uh, on the net. Uh, now you can find this wonderful, beautiful stella we we found uh, in the, the excavation two years ago uh, with colors. Yes, with, uh, yes, we did. We, we, did. Of, of we published the, it in our website. Of the lady Atakelula. Yes. Huh? So when we took it out of the the, the the excavations, you know, I don't say out of the earth because it was. Uh, it was in fact blocked by mud bricks and that explained why it was so well preserved. It was not lying uh, yeah. uh, on one sense or the other. And so we took it out and immediately I was able to understand, I would say 99%. Or 99%? Yeah, because there are funerary texts. Yes. And, uh, so there are still some words, you know, you know what it is, it's a title, but you yeah. don't know exactly what kind of title it is, what kind of work it was, yes. if it was administrative or in a or in a, in a temple or anything. Yeah. But still, you you understand that it was a dignity. Uh, yeah. So, but if I find I've been sent, uh, for example, by Bogdan Zorowski uh, some months ago, uh, an Australian he found, uh, mm. uh, and he was very very happy. To, uh, first, so uh, meriting Yeah, I got my. <laughs> 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 and so he was very very proud to send uh, to send to me a photo, uh, and there were a lot of numbers. Mm -hmm. And what was nice is that we have been recently changing the value of some numbers, some numbers yeah. Yeah. Uh, thanks to an Australian from uh, Kasrimum. This was the, the work of my colleague Jochen Haller, who is at least not working on the language but publishing the, the inscriptions. Mm. Um, and uh, it shows uh, that it works well. The, the addition, uh, the result was oh, was good and for the time being always <laughs> never worked because we had three, uh, yeah, so three wrong progress, yeah. <laughs> numbers, yeah. you know. Uh, but the rest, uh, the rest is really, I understand a little, you know, but um, impossible for me to tell you what they were adding, yeah. if they were adding uh, quantities of gold uh, or if they were adding carrots, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How about Hamadab? <laughs> no, it's not Hamadab. How about Hamadab inscription? Did he make any progress? Ah, I'm, I'm adapt the problem. The big problem of uh, depends. The one which is in the in the British uh, Museum. Yes, I understand it better and better all the time. But I would say for the time being, I understand ten percent of it. Does it talk about the war? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, yeah. But uh, in Amadab inscription, it's not sure they are speaking of the. In fact, they speak of different wars, you know, and the war against the Roman is not uh, so important. I would say it doesn't uh, occupy all the text, 
there have been some problems with other uh, snake uh, and so uh, it's mixed a bit with the same and it mm. specially uh, occurs in the second stella mm. and the problem of the second stella is not that much a problem of language but a problem of preservation of the science yes, yes. because only a little part of the, the text is preserved mm. and this one I would say that I understand not even 5%. Mm. But the problem is that already 50% uh, is lost. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's <laughs> nothing like that. Yeah. And the, the 50 person yeah. that, that stay. Uh, so you see that it's not only... Correct. The only thing is, no, I don't think and even... I just hope that I live a long time to be able uh, we, to... We, we, ha we hope that too. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Um, but uh, no, I've... I think that there will still a lot of work for my successors yeah. when uh, I'm leaving this earth. You know. Well, how, you never know. You never know. It might happen overnight. <laughs> <laughs> no, what could happen is us to find bilingual texts. You know. Do you think we'll ever have that? Because we, Isana, one of Isana's scripts, and they had uh, Greek in it. Yeah. In the, uh, we found it in Meroe. Yeah, yeah. Why not? Why yeah. not? As I know, we has we have it in uh, three languages: yeah. in South South Arabian, yeah, Sabian, yeah. in Sab in kind of Sabian, but it's in fact a, a big mixed language between yeah. South Arabian, you know, uh, and uh, of course in Greek. Greek, you know. yeah. Uh, yeah. Emeritic uh, uh, translation. Why not? But there could be something else. Uh, with archaeology, you can never know. It's n things never happen as you expect, you know. Yeah. Uh, I will just finish with Etruscan. Mm -hmm. uh, I was speaking of Etruscan, which is a lost language of uh, uh, Italy, you know, who disappeared the uh, first century uh, AD, you know, mm -hmm. uh, replaced by Latin. Mm -hmm. And uh, strangely enough, we have nearly no, uh, we had nearly no bilingual text, you know, mm -hmm. or something so short that uh, it was not, uh, yeah. yeah. And finally, they found, uh, so what people expected was a text, a big text in Latin mm -hmm. and in Etruscan. Yeah. And finally, they, we found uh, in 64, 1964, uh, three golden, golden plates, you know, and two are in Etruscan. And the last one is not in Roman, mm -hmm. it's much older. It is uh, written uh, in Phoenician. Phoenician all the way up, okay. <laughs> wow. Unfortunately, it's not really a translation. They mm. are speaking of the same thing, mm. but uh, different in wording. different yeah. way. And so it didn't, it helped a bit, but not that much. Yes. So you can never know. You c that was completely unexpected. Yeah. Well, Dr. Riley, I, I, I would just would like to take the time and, and thank you for all the effort and, and that you put in the Meroitic and deciphering it. I mean, I'm, I'm talking on behalf of all Sudanese right now. We, we look up to you. You, you are a, a very enlightened person, very enlightened scholar and doctor mm -hmm. that everybody's looking up to you. And, and we appreciate all the hard work you put in yeah. to decipher the Meroitic language. And, and we think it's it just like our dream one day that will come true that we we ha we be able to read all the inscriptions freely and and say the the proper pronunciation of everything you've done a great job so far we just need more books from you we need yeah. you we need translate you, more books what we need is also sudanese uh, people who gifted Sudanese people and there are a lot <laughs> and yes, I know a lot yeah. to, uh, to to help me for this kind of thing yeah definitely thank yeah. you so much for your time and I appreciate the effort about time battery almost died you want to say something, last thing for the guys? No, no, it's okay. Uh, I, I did. No, I, <laughs> I, did, did. <laughs> I will cut this part out. That's fine. Uh. I will cut it out. <laughs>